we're now continuing with Chapter 5 of the Kansas Journey, a read-along. I'm on page 102, and we're going to zoom in up here. It says, the rules of the state government today. There are levels of government in the United States. The federal, or national government, makes laws and provides services to everyone in the country. State governments also make laws and provide services, but they must follow the laws dictated by the federal government. Counties and cities also have governments. Those, these local governments follow the laws of both the federal and the state governments, but make local laws called ordinances. As citizens, we receive services from all three levels of government. Our state government is made up of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. All three branches of government are identified in the state constitution and have parallel duties to those outlined in the U.S. Constitution. Then down here we have a picture. It says, Governor Kathleen Sebelius is shown driving a combine near Caldwell. The governor was traveling the state surveying the wheat crop. In 2004, half of the wheat was destroyed by drought and late spring freezes. It is important for state officials to know what is happening with the state's farmers. In this case, the state was preparing to ask the federal government to declare a disaster so that money could, would be available to help Kansas farmers who lost their crops. Executive Branch The governor is the head of the executive branch. The state constitution gives the governor the responsibility of administering the laws of the state. The governor is elected by the people and can serve up to two consecutive four-year terms. He or she reviews the condition of the state and makes suggestions about how to improve life for all Kansans. The governor then works with the legislature to find solutions to solve problems. The governor oversees the budget of the state and represents Kansas at many events. The people of Kansas receive many services from state government. Most state agencies are under the executive branch, maintaining and building roads, protecting our food and water supply, providing for a secure and safe place to live, and administering parks and historic sites are just a few of the functions of the executive branch. It is also the job of the executive branch to collect taxes. Tax revenue is tied directly to the amount of services the public receives. The state also has a lieutenant governor who can take over the governor's duties if the governor is unable to serve. The secretary of state is in charge of elections and the Attorney General is the chief lawyer for the state of Kansas. The state treasurer keeps track of the state's revenues. These are all elected offices that are part of the executive branch as written in the state constitution. Legislative branch. The state, the state Senate and House of Representatives make up the legislature. It is their job to make the laws of the state. Each January, senators and representatives come together in Topeka for the legislative session. The state is divided into the Senate and the House districts based on population. The people in each district elect members to the legislature. This allows for people in all areas of the state to be represented in the state government. The process of making laws can be complicated. Any member of the legislature can introduce a bill. The state constitution does not allow a member of the public to directly introduce legislation. Instead, the people must convince their elected officials to introduce their concerns to the legislature. This is called representative government. A legislative bill may allocate the budget of the state program. 
An example of such bill would be one that provides money for your school. Sometimes the legislature has to introduce bills that increase or decrease taxes depending on spending needs. Bills also may also propose new laws or changes to existing ones. For example, the legislature has considered bills that change the requirements for obtaining Kansas driver's license. A bill must pass both the Senate and the House of Representatives and be approved by the governor before it becomes a law. If the governor vetoes a bill, it still may be considered by the legislator, legislature if two-thirds of the members of both the Senate and the House of Representatives still want the bill. Then the bill becomes law without the governor's approval. Then up here you can see a picture inside the Capitol building that's in Topeka. It says the Kansas Senate and the House of Representatives meet each year at the state capitol. The st Senate chamber was considered very elegant when it was completed. The senators' desks and chairs are handmade of native Kansas woods. And then we'll look at this graphic over here. Senate. 40 senators, four-year terms, each represents approximately 60,000 people. House, 125 representatives, two-year terms, each represents approximately 19,000 people. Okay, we're going to turn the page. Now I'm on page 104. Whoops. Judicial branch. It is the job of the judicial branch to interpret the laws. The court settle, courts settle disagreements between people, determine if a person broke a law, and answer legal questions about the law. A criminal case is one that involves a crime. It is the court's responsibility to decide if a person is guilty of that crime, and if so, what his or her punishment should be. We assume that people are innocent until proven guilty. The court also hear the, the courts also hear civil cases. A civil case is between two parties that have a dispute over things such as money or property rights. The court is responsible for settling the dispute in a fair manner. Juries are a very important part of the court system. Juries are made up of citizens. A grand jury is one that determines if there's enough evidence to take a person to court. Once a case goes to court, the trial may have a jury. It is the, it is the job of the jury to de determine if someone is guilty or not guilty. It is the responsibility of the judge to make sure that the jury performs its job in a fair way. The Kansas Supreme Court is the highest court in the state. Today... Kansas has a unified court system. That means that all courts in the state are under the administration of the state Supreme Court. Seven justices make up the Supreme Court. The governor appoints the justices. The Supreme Court interprets the laws that make sure that they are legal under the state constitution. What do you think? The power of the government is held by the people. To have a truly representative government, it is important for all citizens to participate in their government. Can you think of, a, of ways that you or your family can participate in state government? How might you actively participate in your community? Here is a picture of a statue. And it says, Justice is a very large sculpture in the atrium of the Judicial Center. The bird depicted in the sculpture is a prairie falcon, which is native to Kansas. The message on the wall reads, Within these walls, the balance of justice weighs equal. High school students in the state were asked to submit phrases that they thought were important to the concept of justice. This message was the winning entry. Now I'm going to go to the top of page 105. 
what does local government do? Each community in Kansas has a local government. There are city and county governments. Local governments are responsible for making sure that federal, state, and local laws are carried out in their communities. Local governments also provide important services, making sure your community is safe and desirable place to live. Many local governments have internet sites to share what is happening in their community. Read the passage below from Wichita's site to learn what services the local government provides. Ever wonder what life in this, a day in the life of the city includes? We averaged yearly numbers to determine what is done in a 24 hours. Central Inspection will review and issue 115 building, electrical, plumbing, and mechanical permits for new building construction, remodeling, or altercation projects. Alteration projects, sorry. Public Works will sweep 150 miles of street, fill 140 potholes, repair 160 square yards of pavement, and make 20 new street signs. Parks and Rec, Parks and Recreation will mow and maintain 25 acres a day, plant five trees, and hold 25 events in their facilities. The airport will have 40 departures and 3,400 passengers flying in or out of Wichita and process over 85 tons of cargo. Everyday Housing Services provides housing to over 2,400 low-income families in Wichita, processes five loan requests, and responds to 150 rental assistance calls. Law will handle 24 legal matters involving civil litigation, claims for damages, legal service assignments, and municipal court appeals. Municipal court will process 1,329 people and close 11 probation cases. Police will patrol 100 square miles, investigate 68 cases, interview 30 suspects, work 14 accidents, and give three presentations on crime pre prevention. File will respond to eight structure fires, 78 medical-related emergencies, investigate the cause of three fires, and give two fire prevention programs for 40 children. Water and sewer will operate and maintain 61.7 million gallons of water, operate and maintain 1,850 miles of water line, operate and maintain 53 sanitary sewer lift stations, and treat 37.9 million gallons of waste water. Transit services will transport 5,700 people and 600 disabled people in special ADA vehicles to their destination. Activity. As your local government or your local government services, as a class, review the current budget of your city or county government. By ex examining the budget, you can determine what services your government provides. Do all things do all the things your local government does to make your life better surprise you? Are there other services you would like to see from your government? Remember, you must be willing to pay for services. That's why we have taxes. Now I'm on page 106. I'm, a, I'm looking at this picture on the left. It says, the most recent addition to the state capitol is the statue of the Kansa Indian on the top of the dome. For many years, the dome was topped with a lone light bulb. The, the Kansa Indian statue was added in 2002. Now this spread says the Kansas State Capitol. The state capitol in Topeka stands as the monument to state government. It is where the governor and the legislator work. Legislature work, okay. It was also once the home to the judicial branch, which now makes its home in a separate building called the Judicial Center, choosing the capital city. Many cities wanted to be the capital of Kansas. Cyrus K. Holliday, one of the founders of the city of Topeka and the and Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad, 
worked hard to convince people that Topeka was a perfect capital city. His most persuasive argument came in the form of a donation of 20 acres of land upon which the capital could be built. The Wyandotte Const- Const- Constitutional Convention made Topeka the temporary capital. The location of the capital was put to the vote of the people. Topeka won, receiving 7,996 of the 14,471 votes. Lawrence came in second place with 5,291 votes. Building the state capital, the governor and the legislature wanted to build one of the best capitals in the United States. They thought that the Kansas capital should be as good or better than the national capital in Washington, D.C. This was quite a contrast to the buildings that existed in Kansas at the time. Most people lived and worked in modest buildings. Some were even made from sod. The state capitol did not always look like it does today. It was built in stages and took 37 years to complete. The two wings of the building were built first. In the beginning, of a, wooden, a covered wooden sidewalk connected the two buildings. It was called the Cave of Winds. Originally, the capitol was, was to be built of stone quarried near, near Topeka. The foundation was laid but the harsh winter made the stone crumble. This was not a good sign for such an important building. The Topeka stone was removed and replaced with limestone from Junction City. So you can see over here the two sides. It says, newspapers at the time praised the style of the capital. They thought it showed strength and respect for government. It was a symbol of something permanent. The east wing was the first part of the capital was the first part of the Capitol built and occupied. The fence surrounding the building was to keep cows, pigs, and other animals away from the state grounds, state house grounds. The exterior of the central portion of the Capitol was completed 37 years after the East Wing began. A ghost story. The building of the Kansas Capitol was a monumental task. The work was hard and dangerous. Nine men lost their lives building the state capitol. Sometimes on rainy, windy nights, workers of the capital, at the capitol hear strange sounds and echoing footsteps. Neighbors have reported hearing a tapping sound coming from the dome. Some think it's the ghost of a worker who died during construction. It was the job of one worker to fasten the plates on the dome of the capitol. One day he stretched to reach a bolt, lost his balance, and fell to his death. Because the accident occurred near the end of the month, the worker was never able to collect the pay he earned. Workers were paid at the end of the month. Legend says the worker returns to the capital each night searching for someone to pay him. Sometimes he continues to work, tapping on the dome, working overtime for his wages.